Custom Culture Rodcast, brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Culture Deluxe Magazines. I am Double Deuce, and I am here at Murphy's Rod and Custom Shop in ridiculously hot Buda, Texas, <laughs> sitting here next to Murpho. How you doing, my brother? What's happening, my brother? I'm doing great. Good. I've come off an amazing week, and we are back in the shop doing our thing again. I've got to... Uh, get down and get busy on El Matador working on this 52 Chevrolet custom truck that we're doing and uh, too, it's been way. it's been good it's been good we are melting I'm <laughs> we not are melting lie. we are melting uh, it is uh, not unhumid it's it is it's daunting I'm walking yeah. around with this film on my arms <laughs> yeah. doing my thing but I couldn't complain I've had the most amazing weekend at show we're going to get to this in a yep. second it was just so invigorating and uh, revitalizing for me to go there inspiring right to, i can't even say enough about what a great time i had we'll come to that and um i'm just excited to be here right oh and also with us is miss sarah the publisher and grand poobah of old school rods and car culture deluxe magazines everything you see in it the 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 picture everything she does all the good of goods sarah how are you today howdy i'm just swell thank you deuce <laughs> yeah. wasn't that a good one the good the, the stuff and stuff and the good goods yeah the good goods the stuffy <laughs> stuff yes that's we, all me we really can't say enough about miss sarah and the creativity it's kind of like oozing out we see these magazines all over the table and we know that all the layouts cover to cover everything that goes into the design and the format is from this young lady right here Yes. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Thank man, you. We are on our fourth episode of the second season, man. Who would have thunk it when we first started? And it, for all of you people out there, if this is your first one, go back to the first couple. <laughs> they are rough. Or, oh. or I propose another option. Perhaps just listen to them in reverse and, and grow <laughs> um, like an affection with the, towards us with the newer yeah. ones. And then you'll think it's cute, the you're, older ones. You're going to think we were sober <laughs> now and grow up then. Which well, <laughs> we're we, we we've come we've come a ways. We have come a ways, yeah. man. And speaking of that, let's just jump into this episode, man. Okay. I'm, I'm excited to talk about this. We have um, a one one bad dude on the show today. We have Mr. Kevin Anderson, who puts on the custom car revival up in Indianapolis, Indiana. He is a really cool guy. I met him in, in Tulsa with the, for the the Tulsa show in the Fine Irons, man, and he has. A bad car we're going to talk about in a minute. You've heard us talk about it before, and I love, love this car. <laughs> but I want to get I want to get him on the line right now. Kevin, you here, buddy? Breaker, breaker. Breaker, Double breaker. Deuce. <laughs> Murpho. Sarah. Yes. How are you, my friend? I'm in the house. Right yeah, on. in the house. Welcome to the show, sir. It the is party has arrived. On. Yeah, stoked to be here. It's great. All right, I've so been uh, really excited about what you guys have been doing can tell there's great pra- passion on your side and it, and it comes through a lot of fun and uh and it's all good it's a, it's a good product you're doing a great job thank you so much for that thank we you. appreciate that coming from you and we've been on our horse and we've been doing our thing we've been trying to do our part so right yeah kevin what an amazing show i have not been before this past weekend and i can't tell you what an amazing time i had and uh, every time that I see you, I know that we grow a little bit closer and get to know each other a little bit better. But, man, my hat is off to you. Well, nice of you to say my strongest encouragement would be for you to keep me at an arm's length distance because most <laughs> people really don't want to be that close to me with any given time. But, <laughs> but uh, nice of you to say, yes. brother. Uh, yes, brother. Brother, uh, brother to brother. So, uh, so you know the the revival is is, uh, is a, a really an unusual thing. I'm hesitant to call it a show, even though it is. Um, and I always say this when folks uh, enter and I and I find out or they're, or they're coming, I always say, now you know I want you to know what you're getting yourself into. Uh, you know we don't have vendors, uh, we we don't have a SWAT me, uh, we don't have a valve racing contest. We just I just don't care. You know I just don't care right. about that stuff. I'm just interested in the cars and the people. And if you're really into traditional customs you're going to have a great weekend. But if you're coming expecting Elvis impersonators, you know, this may not be your deal. You know? Yeah. So fortunately for me, I really only care about cars. <laughs> yeah, I really yeah. only care about I know, traditional I know. hot rods and customs. <laughs> I, I don't care about the accolades. I don't care no. about Elvis. I don't care about really anything the else. Monster mm-hmm. trucks I'm really fairly yeah. one dimensional for, so for me, this is like amazing. Well, it's an well, invite and, only. And, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and, um, and and accordingly, we make sure what we, what we say are traditional customs. Everybody has maybe a little different a different definition, but we make sure that the right kind of cars get in. And so we say um, we look at a tail dragger, thirty five, thirty six Ford, let's say, through up uh, through the forties and fifties and, and early sixties up to Larry Watson. Mm-hmm. styled car yeah. so you yeah. know you can have an early 60s car that's maybe doesn't have anybody work but has a a, a watson style paint scheme and, and we're good with that right uh but i mean even you know respectfully even saturday i i turned down a george poteet car yeah that the, the guy was the nicest guy in the world and he knew his car kind of no it was a street rod you know yeah beautiful and, car uh, but but not a custom yeah yeah and 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 i always say people you know uh, Cool Camaro. We'd love you to come over and walk around with us, but you're gonna have to park across the street. And <laughs> and and you know, be nice, but be firm. And 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 uh, it, honestly, it's the only thing that makes the the, the the show special. I wouldn't come to my own show if it were not this type of a show. And if this show were somewhere else across the country, I'd do anything to get there too, because we all have this common this common bond of love for these cars. We you know? do. So and- is that why you started this show? Because you were like. I have no shows to go to. They're not. Up Are to you my reading standards. my mind? I mean, seriously, Sarah. <laughs> um, yeah, you know the show. The show was started uh, out of conversations with a good friend of mine who's, who's passed away. But we got frustrated, and we thought a, a lot of guys like us uh, uh, did uh, were frustrated as well because you pull into a show, and and uh, you know there might be a, a new F one hundred and fifty sitting next to you, or a new Camaro, mm-hmm. or and those people are, are proud of their cars too. But then eventually, but <laughs> well, right, and 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 eventually, what happened, and I say this respectfully, is there were a, a lot of uh, uh, custom organizations who put on what they said were custom shows in the Midwest and other places. But eventually, you know, they they got more and more lenient about what they would allow in, and th- those people are my friends. I'm mm-hmm. not speaking poorly of any of them, but they turned into a business, and so mm, uh, we kind yeah. of started this whole premise of. What if we started a show and didn't really care how many people showed up and accordingly mm-hmm. gave the money away? So, so and, and, do Sarah, us. check this out. Check this out. Kevin, uh, the show is limited to 200 cars. Right. There is no desire whatsoever yeah. to ever be more than 200 Never. cars. Never. Mm-hmm. Never. And the other cool thing is what happens with the entry. Tell me about it. It all goes to charity. Yeah, it goes it, it goes to, to Alzheimer's research. Yeah, you know we felt early on that would, that that meant a lot. You know, to uh, particularly the older guys in our group, to, to all of us, I guess. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> and so when it's all said and done, it's a self sufficient show. I'm the circus clown, the rodeo leader, whatever you want to say. <laughs> right. Uh, that that keeps uh, hurting the cats. Meow. Yeah. You yeah. know that thing, and and I know uh, a little bit about a, that. Well, yeah, you sure do, <laughs> and and it yeah, works, and it works too. for us. And the other thing is, you know, Indianapolis is uh, centrally located in this part of the world so that 80 percent, they say, 80 percent of the population of the country can be here within a day's drive. Mm. So there's a lot there's a lot of cars in Ohio and Uh Michigan and PA and all the Great Lakes. And, you know, even to the south, the northeast, we get a lot of guys that will drive all the way, you know, from upstate New York and, and down from Canada it's just, it just has to do with population. Mm-hmm. Um, you get exactly farther, that. let's say, if you get farther west of St. Louis, you know, there's just not as there's just not that many people, you know, respectfully. Uh, and so we we have a bigger uh, pond to fish out of, shall we say? Mm-hmm. Well, and by its nature, you know, this car, or this car, this show is about the cars that are the star, and it's all driven on passion. Mm-hmm. And Kevin shares this passion. Right. This is something how we bond. Yeah. <clears throat> how we bond, how we connect is through the passion for the cars. Right, right. And the cars right. do all of the talking. That's the best part. Yeah. Man. That's what's cool about something like this where it is the car. It's not all the foo foo like you were saying. You don't get all the bullshit there. It is the car. And the yeah. cars right. are doing the talking. It is, that is it. And what a difference that makes. Yeah. yeah. Like, so, two things. Uh, one, I'm working on the layout for last year's custom car revival in Rods 114. Now, uh, and I don't think it says anything about the charity in there. So if you would send me that info, would love I to will. include that. Yeah, and, I will. Um, second of all, normally uh, event c- footage or coverage, Shelby and I have to go through the images and like cull through them very heavily to sure. weed out um, things like, yeah. you know, the vendors that sure. we aren't necessarily 
trying to like showcase front and center and um, right and all those cars you're talking about that aren't quite up to par i've never seen event coverage where every single image it was like oh i'm going to use this and this <laughs> and this like every oh, single God. car is immaculate oh, and oh, like God. i've never put together an easier layout honestly so oh my gosh sarah holy cow <laughs> well I mean, I'm, I'm i'm pleased to hear that well, yeah, we, it's beautiful. We, I'm and, I'm jealous I wasn't at the show. And and I'll, I'll piggyback on that. I want to talk about the venue in a second, but I went live on the IG mm-hmm. at the show, and um, I literally, as I was live, like walked every car, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Nice, holy moly!" It just yeah. doesn't end. Yeah. It was like every yeah. one after the next after the next. We're all just like mm-hmm. like, and you know, and I'm like a car guy. I'm a custom guy, and I'm, yeah. I'm like salivating. I'm like, I can't believe. The collection of cars in one place that I'm looking at, like, and yeah, it it was to start and end, end. I could tell end looking end. at the coverage for sure. I was gonna say something a little more salacious than salivating, okay? Um, but I could you? tell <laughs> you were having a bodily response to this uh, car show <laughs> by looking at the coverage. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Call them out. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was. Well, you... Yes. Go ahead. I'm Go sorry. ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, um, I, I'm a real, um, I'm not real picky. Uh, let's say, you know, if a car's got modern rear view mirrors, okay. You know, if a car has got, uh, as, uh, most, n- most of these cars are not exactly the way they were in the day. Our right. definition mm-hmm. of custom is really more about appearances. Right. You know, mm-hmm. I'm not going to knock you out because you have uh, disc brakes instead of drums and, right. you know, I'm not that interested, but you know, we, we've had one car in particular that was built by a shop and it's just, just a, it, it's the kind of car you'd see on a calendar, you know, in a tool shop or something, but it had 20 inch rims on it. And mm-hmm. there wasn't a single, it was a 51 Mercury. It was a killer car, but it, it, it did not fit the term traditional, right. you know? I and love then, how we, he only yeah. has 200 cars at a show and he's like, I'm not yeah, and, and, <laughs> you know, and, okay. and, and, and I'm, you know, I, I go to good guys events, but I go to good guys events where there's been 1500 cars and there are only four cars that I would let in my show. Mm-hmm. Right. Because they're, you know, we stick to kind of that word traditional. So I've had grown men come up to me and say, well, you've just ruined my summer. And I'm like, I'm sorry, <laughs> well, what did I do? And they're like, I have no reason to ever go to another car show this summer mm-hmm. until next year because Ruined I'll them. never see this many uh, customs all in one place. And, uh, that's right. And it's really not. It's not about me. You know, yeah, I, I put on the show, but I tell people every year at the show, it's their show, too. You know, mm-hmm. everybody does their part. They, they get here and and some some people travel great distances like you know like you guys this weekend some guys live down the street some guys live an hour some guys live a day away but when everybody shows up with a common thread and a common interest fun things happen and we all just get a big kick out of it you know yeah that's fantastic i mean i'm just excited i, I wish i was there i've seen some pictures but yeah where were you um I, <laughs> I got a date. Too personal, I, too I, personal. I got a date job. No, my my oldest son is in a baseball thing, and he's doing well in a traveling baseball team, so we travel all over the place for him on weekends. You're forgiven. Yeah. <laughs> Why, thank you. But yeah, that's a good thing you're forgiven. I, I, yeah, I cannot wait to get up there and see these cars. for the. And I love all cars. I love them. Like you said yourself, you know, like that Mercury with the 20s, are, is, it's a cool car, but it's not traditional. And I love, I love them both. But man, to, to see them the way that they would have, if the designer of the car could have had them roll out the showroom just a little bit different, you know, is cool. Right. You know. Mm-hmm. You know, a, a good a good wrap around sentence that we use for the show is if your car could have rolled out of George, Gene, or Joe's shop back in the day, you're probably okay. Oh my mm. gosh! Okay. Yeah, it's probably, probably, uh, all over my pro- I was probably grab okay. my phone too, so we could have a. Uh, we're doing video for the first time today. Uh, I wanted to have like a goosebump cam. Yeah, I, I, every show we talk about something, I get goosebumps. A goosebump cam. All the, all yeah, because um, he oh, says it, wait. and it's he really don't means you, it. Don't you mean the deuce bump? Oh, oh, boom. 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 Okay, Kevin just Brandon. coined that phrase, boom. bro. Now I'm going to have to make a t-shirt that says that now, and, <laughs> and I'm going to sign at the bottom of the thing, Kevin Anderson, because you coined the phrase. Yeah. Look at well, you know, and antibiotics will usually take care of that, so <laughs> I would applaud you in that regard. Yeah. But, you know, I, I just was uh, real fortunate to get into this 30-something you know, years ago. 
when you know you could listen and pay attention to what George Barris said. Or I, I became good friends with Sam's son, John Barris. Uh, Joe Bale and I were good friends, and DeRosa, and of course, everybody loves Winfield. Happy birthday, Gene. And mm -hmm. Mike and Larry Alexander and Bo Huff and Gary Chapafioto and Frank Livingston, a dear friend. And and if you look at the path they have traveled, I might not always agree with, with every little design thing, but that's what's so fascinating about customs. Right. You can, you can say, I mean, I do this all the time, particularly with two-tone paint jobs. I'll think, man, I would have never painted those two colors together on that car. But they look fantastic, exactly. right? As as opposed and, to just seeing rows and rows of Corvettes and Camaros or you know whatever. Cookie uh, Paul Bragg just did just such incredible stuff. But but and God bless him, he's still alive. But you know, and he, and he does. Uh, he's just he's done so many artistic, beautiful things. But unless you know what you're looking at, you would never have any idea that someone did that with their hands. Yeah. You know, well, so and that's really cool stuff to me. That's what's so amazing about our culture is that the artistic expression, you know, and you're not going to get into the zone where if you're building a resto mod or something pro street or what have you, like this is the look and this is what you do to make this car be that. Right. What right. we have really is a culture where as builders or enthusiasts, we're able to build rolling art. That's a reflection of our part of in traditional, but, but our taste and right. everybody gets to be a little bit different. And that's what's really cool, though, man. It's like you can see something about this car and you just see this like one thing and you're like, oh, and you're juiced, you know, and it's right. different from the next. And it isn't cookie cutter and it isn't the same thing. And everybody gets to be an artist and then you get to drive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I joke with my I, my buddies locally. I'm like, it'd be so much easier if we were just driving Camaros. What the heck's wrong with us? <laughs> you know, I mean, these cars are not these cars are not for the timid. Mm -hmm. These are not these are not for you know people that don't like uh, a, a, a labor of love to be part of their life. Um, it's just it's not easy. I had a guy come to me in a museum once who said uh, I rebuilt Camaros. And I really want to build a chop custom Merc. You know, can you offer some suggestions to me? And the guy obviously was mechanically inclined, probably much more than I am. And uh, I said, well, can I just talk to you like like we're friends, like your brother, like we know each other really well? And he goes, yeah, man, bring it on. And I said, my str he said, I really want to build a chop Merc, a full-blown custom Merc. And I said, my strongest encouragement to you is to change your mind. <laughs> he's like what i said these are not easy cars no this is not for the timid you, <laughs> yeah. you 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 need to subscribe to some magazines and go to some shows mm -hmm. and really begin to think about what you want to do because you can jump off the cliff and realize even even with your great knowledge that maybe you know this isn't your cup of tea i, I know in my 50 mercury i've got parts of 12 different cars Mm -hmm. you know in yeah. that and there's no handbook no you can go get for that right you've got to figure that out it, you can't build these cars out of a catalog no right way. No. somebody's right. got to have some skill set and somebody's got to be able to meld and make things go together that were never intended to do so well and and and, and you would say the guy wants to chop the top that, that, that's no easy feat everyone there's a lot of guys out there who chop tops and there's a lot of guys even more guys out there who repair chopped yeah. out yeah you know what i mean that where it, yeah it's, it's not near as easy as you think as people think no. it is. yeah i always I'm, use i always use the analogy of uh, take a cheerleader's megaphone at, at high school and uh, cut six inches out of the middle of the thing and then see how the two pieces go together mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah that's, that's right. pretty graphic you know yeah. people are like oh yeah, yeah hey we well, well, might have to pocket that one to use later that's a good one yeah <laughs> and it's like well what do you got in your bag of tricks, huh? Doctor? Right. Huh? right. Where's your skill set? Well, that's something, uh, you know, working in the office here, we hear all the time people come in like, hey, I got this, you know, whatever. And they, they want a quote like they would going back to a dealership or something. Right. It's like, right. no, it doesn't work right. like that. Like everything's custom. Right. You're putting like different things together that ne were never meant to go together. Um, it's not, it's not like easy peasy. Oh, it'll be this well, nice uh, round number. And, and the other thing about these cars is like, they're all like Tigger. They're mm -hmm. the only one. Right. right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Unicorns. 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 Yeah. yeah. That's exactly. That's what you're oh yeah. My na my neighbor has a 32 Ford and I just got one and I want it to look the same. It's never going right. to look the same, man. Right. It's a different car. Right. Yeah. You know, you know I, I frequently will say, and I say this respectfully to, anyone who's been courageous enough to, to uh, adopt a child, you know, that's just a, 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 an extraordinary thing to do. 
But when you adopt a child or even if you just go, you know, pick up a puppy, uh, you know, someplace, you don't really know what you're getting, but you're making a commitment, right? Yeah. You're right. going gonna to go down a road together and you're like, listen, yep. I'm, I'm committed. And, uh, and so jumping off the cliff, I'm just going to say it like that, uh, for, for the weak need, uh, this is not their cup of tea. And that's what, frankly, makes it special. One day I, I worked mm -hmm. all day with a, a buddy of mine who had a hot rod shop here in town and uh, in the 90s. And he and I worked all day to run a simple bolt through the firewall uh, to the other side. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed to tell you uh, that it took us almost all day to do that simple task. And I came home and I told my wife and I said, I'll never tell anybody this story. We spent all day trying to thread a bolt through the darn <laughs> firewall. This is so, re so embarrassing, right? And my wife, Meredith, said, you know, if it were easy to have one of these cars, everyone would exactly. Have and they Boom. say to she you, "How right much on, will right? it cost to build this uh -huh. beautiful piece of art?" And I say, mm -hmm. "I don't know." Try yeah. to screw a bolt through the firewall. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know. Just don't tell anybody. Wait, was that? Is this being recorded? Oh, oh crap! <laughs> speaking, speaking of being recorded, we have got to take a quick break for our sponsors, and we will be back with Mr. Kevin Anderson. And with Mur Ms. Mur 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 with Mur Murpho and Miss Sarah. I mix that together. And I said Miss Murpho and I said, wait a minute. minute. Murpho and Miss Sarah and myself will be back to the fifth, I think, fifth episode of the, four, of the second season of the Custom Culture Rodcast. Brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Culture Lux Magazine. We'll be right back. Hey, y'all, this is Double Deuce, the voice of Custom Culture Rodcast. Do your part to keep print media alive. Head on over to MurphosPublishing.com. You can subscribe to both magazines, Car Culture Deluxe and Old School Rods. Do your part, as everyone should. Keep print media alive. Subscribe today. Welcome back to the Custom Culture Rodcast, brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Culture Deluxe Magazines. This is episode five of season two. Murpho. I would like to thank New Belgium and 1985 IPA for sponsoring our show. Which, by the way, mm, this delicious. beer is good. <laughs> New Belgium is out of Colorado, I believe. And it is. It's good cold beer. It is. All right, we're back. On with the show. On with the show. Kevin, you still there, buddy? Breaker, breaker. Breaker, yeah. breaker. <laughs> <laughs> All I, right. I, did, I never, I never did use that professionally, but it somehow seems appropriate with you guys. So there, yeah, the well, yeah, it, it does. I like it. We can roll with it. We can. Yeah, yeah. Like I every, may steal it after the smoking the bandit. Everybody, yeah, it's a little smoky thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, uh, I think that you had mentioned <laughs> that you've been involved with and been passionate about and have had custom cars in your blood for like thirty years. Yes, and I'm interested. And, and I'll tell you why in a second, but you're going to understand. If you go back into the archives and you think about the first time that you had a car of yours that right. was published in a magazine. Yeah. Whether it was at yeah. an event or it was a yeah. feature, I don't know. But what was that experience? Well, it's, it's, um, it's, it's crazy. You can't believe it. You're pinching yourself. You want to run around and tell strangers. You want to buy every copy off the newsstand. You wanna you wanna kiss people you haven't even met. You're just you're overjoyed, and your wife tries to ratchet you back down to earth. But, <laughs> Impossible. But, Impossible. It's never happening. Well, yeah, and 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 I thought about that a lot. You know, I, I've been um, I thought about that subject a lot, and the, and 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 I know uh, in previous episodes, season one, you know, we you, you talked about um, print and and keeping print alive, and I'm all of course down with that. We all are, and I've thought about you know we all say there's something about holding it and all that that uh subject matter and i think it's because it documents history at a point in time that on this day on this month and this issue this car mattered this was different this is something that people wanted to see and and digital is awesome you can count the numbers i get it i work in that line of business i get it but but there's something about being able to hold it um that that's incredibly special, and uh, and 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 you all have just done such a, a extraordinary job of fostering um, the, the print industry, uh, w w whether they whether they be with entry level cars are are, are really nice, you know high end cars, 
I will tell you those uh, those owners all have the same experience, no doubt about it. Right. You know, for me, it's always been the case that like those experiences in the beginning of having these cars in print were were the thing. Like, um, I've been very fortunate, and I'm and I know you can relate to this. I've won some very big accolades, some car shows, right. and some Hall awards, or whatever. But Hall of Fame, <clears throat> Hall of Fame, <clears throat> Hall of Fame. <laughs> But being in print and that feeling and that experience of having a car be recepted and also appreciated by the masses that you cannot put your pulse on or know, but you get the fact that it's just been received in such a way that it's going to be immortalized and be in print forever is the thing. Yeah, it's cool. It's it's really cool. You know, I think most of us have some affinity towards old stuff, antiques, whatever you want to call it. And and I think it's because it, it is a slice of time in the in the past that you can look back, you can touch, you can hold, you can feel. And so that's why we're drawn to these cars. You right. know, they're a little slice of Americana that honestly doesn't exist anywhere else. Exactly. And and and, and seriously, and I mean th- this sounds a little wackadoodle, but hear me out. You take a, a great piece of music, take a great piece of rock, a country, uh, uh, orchestra, chamber I, I don't care take a great piece of music and break it down to just the cymbals it's kind of boring and then you add the strings and eh, it doesn't really do anything for you the drums the percussion piece by piece individually the pieces really aren't particularly outstanding but when you put them all together a piece of music when it all works at the right time it's magical it's emotional it's special right and that's what these cars are that's what these cars yeah, are and it's exactly. all about these cars exactly. right right and it's right. it's unique and it's particular and it is our culture that is surrounding these cars. Right. And and like you get it or you don't. And it's in yeah, your blood or I, it's not. I, I've got a friend who's serious about fishing and he loves to fish and I jokingly said to him one day, You spent how much on a fish finder? What the <laughs> heck? You know, and well, that's ridiculous. You realize you could, you know, you could for what you spent on your boat, the fish finder, you you could you could go to Red Lobster every night their whole life, and they serve it to you on a platter. <laughs> and then he said, really? Right. What did you spend on those sombrero hubcaps? And, right. and I'm like, hey, wait a minute. That's different. <laughs> but, of course, it's it's not. You no. know. So he has a passion for that. We have a passion for this. Yeah. And uh, it's it's a really uh, – it's it's a spectacular thing. The cars bring us together, but, you know, the cars never call each other. It's the personalities. And we're all cut some from some version of the same cloth. I've met That's right. Yeah. Multi, multi, multi millionaires, billionaires. Uh, and I've and I and I can hang out with them just like guys who, you know, ride the back of garbage trucks. We all have that same <laughs> it, that same it, passion. It, it, 100% that's right. It, it, and, and, and that's how and that's what connects us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's what drives what we do. And that drives our culture. Kevin, I'm looking at a six deuce carburetor set up on an intake that's in my in my shop right here and i feel like i could put that on the table and everybody who walked into the shop today they either stopped and their draw dropped and i knew that they got it or they just looked right past it like right right like that's what we're talking about like you're you're and and that's why you're gonna box that thing up and ship that to indianapolis (laughs) no when he first got that (laughs) when he first got that thing you know the week before it wasn't here and i show up for the for the broadcast and I walk in, that's exactly what I looked at was I'm standing yeah. there looking at it and Murphy walks in behind me and he goes, I knew it. <laughs> when they sitting there, sit there going, this is rad, dude. I love it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And well, you, you, go ahead. No, you Sorry. go. You go. Well, I was just going to say, um, it's that kind of stuff that, that makes it fun. When you find something that nobody else can find or you, or you rejoice in finding something for a buddy, you know, it's a mystery. I mean, many times I'll go to swap meets and my wife will say, what are you looking for? I'm like, I'm not looking for anything, but you don't know what you'll find. Exactly. Right. You know, it's mm-hmm. just, it's a treasure hunt. Yeah, you know? I'll, and, I'll, yeah. I'll and, know. And it's I'll a know privilege. It yeah. Let, yeah. Let's not kid ourselves. You know, it's a privilege to be able to do this. Right. Um, I, I think, I think at times uh, some of the most fun I remember is breaking down on the side of the road or in high school when we worked on our, each other's cars and we did stupid things, but we learned of the process and suddenly along the way you, you you grow you grow up and and you get married and you have kids and life moves on but your passions you know are still all the same and, and i and i want to tell you something uh murfo i uh, you and i talked at uh, the revival about uh ways to prompt i'm about encourage yeah, young guys yeah and, i want to i, I want to get into this for sure 
Okay. And gals. Yeah, this is a big thing. Like young guys <laughs> right. and gals. People. And young people. And the issue people. that Kevin and I were talking about is something that you all know is very important to me. It, it drives me. It's one of the things that wakes me. It's one of the things I think about when I go to bed. It's one of the things that I talk about all the time is how important it is for us to share the disease or spread the passion into the next generation. Yeah. And it's not the same thing as it was when I came up and when I did something and I could be triggered by building something in a metal shop class that all of a sudden I realized was automotive or was related to a car or welding or mechanics or what have you or work at the gas station that's full service. Like there are certain things yesteryear that have to do with our culture and our industry and these cars that aren't existing today to trigger or to... Right. To to poison or to hook or to disease people like Kevin and I and you all here today. Like, what are we going to do, Kevin, to get the next generation in and keep our culture going? I I'm so glad. What a fabulous lead up you've given me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here's here's my idea, and it's based on something that worked. If everyone who listens to this um, this podcast will do this, I mean, it'll make a huge impact all across the country with kids in high school. Go to Murpho Publishing, look at the up at the top, click subscribe, choose CKD or choose Old School Rods, right? Fill in the address and everything with your old high school address. Oh, and, yes. And, and That's direct genius. the direct the magazine to go straight to the shop class or the career center or the school library for one or two years and that uh -huh. magazine will go to that school and it'll be seen by high school Damn. guys and gals who will be curious and and obviously Murpho didn't know I was going to say this but this is one thing we can all do that'll impact gosh thousands mm -hmm. of potential car lovers at the right time and here's how I know this works when I was in high school, I subscribed to Hot Rod Magazine to be delivered to my high school library because I couldn't afford it. <laughs> <laughs> I was a kid, you know. I didn't have a checking account, so when I when the when the the uh, blow-in card you know fell out in my lap one day, I thought, well, my high school should have a copy of this sitting right next to National Geographic and Good Housekeeping. I mean, they were all mm -hmm. boring, you know. So so. Uh, every guy in my high school had access to Hot, to, to Hot Rod Magazine. Uh, so I'm suggesting that we should kind of pay it forward and pay for a subscription to a high school or, or, or whatever of, of your choice. I mean, it's like less than a dinner for two at, you know, mm -hmm. Applebee's or something. Yeah. I don't know how and, I haven't thought about And it would be this. really cool, genius. wouldn't it? Wow. You're a yes. genius, Kevin. Wow, Kevin, and I'm going to tell you this right now. <laughs> We're going to talk after I, the show. I, I'm in, and, and I will tell you that... For every person who decides to do this, and it's a brilliant idea, I will also send a subscription to a high school for everybody. Oh my who gosh! Does this. Hey, okay, that's a scary commitment. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> holy cow! That's yeah. doubling yeah. it up, y'all. Yeah, no, that's a fantastic idea. I'm like, because, check out the you know, big think, brain on Kevin. Like, come on. Think yeah. about. Well, I've got a really, I've got a big noggin. It takes a big hat. Yeah. <laughs> sure. Yeah. But I mean, think about it. If if every high school around Okay, let's just say 50% of the subscribers or the podcast listeners listen to this. If, if, if people did that, even in their own neighborhood, even if they moved out of state, it doesn't really matter. Uh, what an impact, because what you're doing is you're, you're laying, okay, I'm sorry, you're laying the bait. Okay, yeah. you're, you're mm -hmm. giving kids something different other than, than, you know, playing on their phones and playing games and mm -hmm. stuff. You're not going to stop them from doing that. We no. know that. Right. But we also know, and we have family friends at this age. Uh, we also know there are kids that are looking for something more and are drawn mm -hmm. to doing things with their hands. The old guys say, you know, all the, all of us are dying out, these cars, and what's going to happen, Kevin? And my response to them is, you know, we all meet our maker one day, but I'm pretty sure nobody's getting buried with those cars. Mm -hmm. And those cars are going to be around. Okay, okay, um, okay. So here's another point, right, like what you're talking about. There's a lot of cats out there, Kevin, who are hoarding cars. Yeah. And... They have too many in terms of yep. what they're going to build. Yep. And they don't have an avenue or a lane to yep. disperse them or put them into the hands of the people that are going to be passionate and My keep hands. them. 
Someone put them yep. in my hands. Please. So, so if there's an old guy out there listening right now, as a caveat, <laughs> Miss Sarah Holt, publisher at Old School Rods and Car Culture, Car Culture she needs a car. Yeah, hit me up. <laughs> but I mean, in terms you know of it. paying it forward, like, how yeah. is it that you're going to, we're going to get some of these cars that are just kind of setting there, doing nothing, into the hands of some young kids? I've never seen greater joy from friends than when one of our elder seniors realized he needed to start letting go. Mm -hmm. You know, he didn't need six pa uh, six sets of Appleton spotlights. Mm. He, he didn't need six DeSoto grills. Right. He didn't need 40 Chevy he front headlights. And I also know guys who had their own stash that it was part of the treasure hunt mentality and couldn't let go. Right. And, 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 and it's a shame because eventually none of us really own any of this stuff exactly mm -hmm. and and so when you're gone it doesn't really matter right to right. you because you're gone but if you can bring joy to a young person by letting go yes what a gift what, what a, a gift. gift of joy and and happiness for for another whole lifetime after you're gone it's just tremendous and 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 the idea of like hanging on to this stuff as though it's like somebody's judging you by what you have like it, it we've got to reverse this because it's it's like basic economics you know if you can't get this stuff at some type of a reasonable price into the hands of the next generation the whole in, you know the culture is going to die right right like, like if you're right. 19 20 21 or 30 miss sarah thank you and you can't <laughs> get into the lane because of it being right. hoarded and the cost of getting it out of somebody's hands it's not doing something with it it's 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 all it's all backwards like we've got to figure out how to change this and make it so that our industry and our culture is going to thrive and go on because like i mean let's face it like you know and i've said this before somebody's not going to come along and take a 32 high boy and gift it to or give it to a 20 year old right uh, right yeah, that, yeah, that. but yet <laughs> <laughs> Somehow that needs to happen. Mm -hmm. But I thirty year old maybe. I, but Is I remember that, being a kid <laughs> when we were kids, and you get, and you used to see like a a forty seven Cadillac or something sitting in someone's driveway, one of the old people there, you know, or someone at church, whatever. They'd have something, and you would talk to them, and they go, you know what? I'm getting a little older, and they'd sell the right. thing for thirty five hundred bucks or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and you had that ride. But the same person who has it now wants a hundred grand for that doggone car, you know? And it's still, you get what I'm saying? That they, that they're not, the cars are harder to get, right? They get yeah. more expensive, but you know, I, the I, biggest thing I, is, I'm sorry, go ahead, Kevin. Well, I was just going to say, let's, let's shift the conversation just a little bit. Here's sure. what I'm seeing um, in this part of the world. I'm not seeing 20 and 30 year olds going into 50 Mercs and, and 32s or 36s, but I'm seeing them uh, move from from uh tuners mm. uh from some of them from drifting i mean in, in in the in the 2000s it was they moved from rat rods and they're really moving into early 60s cars because in the right neighborhoods in the right place you can still find 60 chevys oldsmobile bubble tops you can find stuff so what i'm seeing happen in, in the 20 and 30s they're not moving into the more serious iron they they think that the big you know, a big olds um, or Pontiac or or a Galaxy 500 can be lowered, dropped, bagged, laced, and they can show up with a, a car that no one else has. And and th they're they're picking up those cars and Are trucks and C10s. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, 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 and C10s. A lot of truck stuff. Right. Well, I just saw I just saw today the Grand National Road Show is going to open up the big building that they always do. With this year, they had Volkswagens in it, huge success. And I'm not a bug guy, but huge right. success. And this year it's going to be all uh, a trucks to mm -hmm. to uh, to ride that pony and and so that's an example of a particular category that it, at least started affordable. Everything eventually, you know, gets is, gets expensive. But well, I'm surprised. I, I see a lot of nice trucks still sitting around that can be had. And I think um, I follow your your logic here. And um, of course, in Texas, we see a lot of trucks. They're very popular. But I kind of think about it like this way. Also, in terms of like music, like, you know, as like a punk rock kid or a skater or whatever, you end up in like re right. into rockabilly or whatever becomes, you know, like old rock and roll becomes kind of like the retirement plan. And I think it's kind of right. the same what you're saying. Like 
maybe you venture into these 60s cars or these trucks or something like that and then eventually you get into the older stuff and the, mm-hmm. and the mercs and so forth and the and the traditional custom stuff but it needs to happen it does it it it, it, it it's it's slow i mean it's it's it i see it happening there's no doubt yeah you know i think the last year i went to paso i was with jerry wiesner and john cow and uh and john bears and we were standing on the porch of the paso rebels in and there was a great, great concern that Jerry Wiesner had because he had grown up in California that the, quote, rat rotters were going to ruin uh, the, the hot rod world for us because they were driving some really unsafe stuff. Yeah. And I said to Jerry, these guys are with their girlfriends and their girlfriends are going to become wives. And, and wives frequently have babies and they won't be putting a stroller in the back of that, you know, beat up, shandled and sectioned Model A. Just, just wait another year or so, and in a year or so, we saw those same people driving '53 Chevys that were lowered, you know. And and so we, I've witnessed the thing, all the way from from you, you know tuners and mini trucks and, and move into rat rods, and then those people move into '60s and and, and early '50s. So so it is happening. Right. How we break away collections. I'm not so sure. Oh. I'm not so sure I've got that one figured out. No, yet. we've got to figure that out. And I agree with you wholeheartedly. Like being a custom guy and like, and I shared with the, I shared this with you, Kevin, but I'll, I'll show you quickly share this with you. It's the same kind of analogy. Like the guys that I came up with, the kids that came up with when we were building our cars do so like, um, you could get so far with them because you're young and your budget. And then all of a sudden it runs. <laughs> and you're off to the races, you know. I mean, right. that's it. Now you're in, and they're right. primed. Yeah. And we didn't mm-hmm. prime our cars because it was cool. We primed right. our cars because that's as far as we could get. Of course. Mm-hmm. And then you get a little older, and you like get a little further, and you get a little more successful, and you have a little more life experience. The next thing you know, you and your buddy's cars are painted. Right. Right. And and that's how the evolution goes. So I get it, and I agree with you wholeheartedly like and so do i, I but like, like, it's funny to hear you talk about the 60s cars the 60s cars those are now 60 years old you know crazy like when we crazy. were kids in the in the 80s and whatnot you know right. the 50s right. cars were 40 years old 30 or 40 years old you know what i'm saying the 40 right so it's, i mean i i get that it's a different time and i get that that the cars are so the cars so your years are years you know so the 60s cars are a great thing but the hard part is when you get all these old cats with these old cars, 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, sitting in a doggone garage or a warehouse yeah. or with yeah. a barn, and they're right. like going, I'm not getting rid of this car. Well, what are you going to do with it? Not a doggone thing, yep. you know? It, 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 <laughs> I try all the time. I'm always I'm always traveling for baseball with my kids, and I'm always driving down the road, and I look and go, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> and I pull over because I see the – the front bumper or the front grill of, of yeah. a Pontiac or a Merc or something, and I go and knock on the door, and my kids are going. Dead. You know, I, I just, <laughs> I just, I just relish those cars that guys have drug out, and are, are are maybe half my age, and they bring to the revival. They'll call me and they'll say, "Well, you know, my car's not really finished." I'm like, "I know, I want your car to come. You've got to be part of the show." Because we don't want the revival to be a foo foo finished car show. Right. Yeah, there's a lot right. of finished <laughs> cars there. And some of the cars have just blown me away, but I want younger guys and I want unfinished cars because I want everyone to feel welcome, you know, at this event. We'll, we'll take a stock car in that's just no stuck in shape. Frankly, if I were in high school in the 50s, that's probably all I could have ever afforded, right? <laughs> and, you know, but a guy comes rolling in with big 20s, you know, God bless him. He can park across the street. I don't care. <laughs> you know, no offense, you know. And I'm going to. So, oh. so primer spots, I'm all in. You know what I mean? You, you you have to be welcoming for sure, and and I'm gonna piggyback on that because that is exactly where we're coming from with print. That's it. And our magazines is 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 that exactly. You know, everybody has an opportunity. And anybody out there who is passionate and has put effort into building their car, whether it's fin finished, unfinished, right. if you had a purpose and you did the best that you could do with what you had to work with and you genuinely applied yourself and tried to build this car and you didn't go out of your way to build something that was unsafe and dangerous and tried to make right. it right. Like you have an opportunity to be 
published and be in print. Everybody right. has that opportunity. Well, make we, make an impact. We talked right. to a to a young builder who he got his very first time in the magazine. And I was talking to him about it. I go, what did it feel like? He said he goes double it. Being in the magazine, it felt like I was Michelangelo in the Mona Lisa. Yeah. Like it was the yeah. only. It was yeah. the greatest thing that's ever happened in the yeah. world at that time. Like mm-hmm. I yeah. was, I was the art in that magazine at that time, you right. know? Mm-hmm. And that to me is, that says it all right there, bro. Right. That says everything about the build, you know? And that experience for him is why we are all here exactly. right now. Right on. That's right why on. we do the broadcast, but that's why Murphy, when he called me, he goes, hey, this is what we're doing. I went, brother, I am in. Because we are going to keep print media alive. One way or the other, we're going to yeah. freaking do it. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's the experience. It's the experience it, to be able to have that feeling. Exactly. Just like Kevin talked about, like I talk about, to see it in there. That is why we're here. To have it. To have it. Have it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, hey, we are actually running out of time. Our uh, <laughs> Matt's over there yelling and screaming and waving and hollering. So... <laughs> we we got to go, Kevin. Thank you so much, brother. Hey, let give us give us your skinny on on if people want to get a hold of you or get a hold of the show. Yeah, absolutely. Insta- yeah, thanks. Uh, Facebook is just my name, Kevin Anderson, or the custom car revival has its own page, and on Instagram, Kevin Anderson four sixty five for our beloved four sixty five loop around the city. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Well, Kevin, but, uh, it's a real privilege to be with you guys, and uh, and and uh, Sarah, you too, and and uh, thanks, and uh, appreciate what you're doing for all the right reasons. You and bet. Uh, the custom car revival will be in Rods 114. I 114. don't remember the exact on sale date, but keep an eye out for that. Y'all. Awesome. And by the way, appreciate you're... your support. It means so much. Yeah. And and vice versa, man. And your Same. Ca- all right, man. Your Cadillac is in old school Rods 107 for, mm-hmm. with the, the the build from El Jefe. <laughs> and that it is beautiful mm-hmm. in the builder feature yeah. yeah yeah it's fantastic i love that yeah car. that's right that's right mike's a mike's a great guy he, he and uh, john barma just the gas x garage yeah. great guys and uh it's a it's a real kill uh, 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 a lot of fun to to have that car and and uh, get out and and enjoy it thank you for the, your kind words you got it brother thank you once again until next time hot rods hot rods Sarah? customs Ladies and gentlemen, thank you again for listening to the fifth episode of the second season of the Custom Culture Rodcast, brought to you by Old School Rods and Car Culture Deluxe Magazines. Good night.